Good evening and welcome to Zoom session number 173. We are up at a different time than we normally are because we have a special guest. I want to introduce you to a Baptist missionary that I have known for most of his life. Nikita Kosachenko is the eldest son of Eugene and Olga Kosachenko, who our church has supported for many years. I have a YouTube video uh, recording an, uh, a, an interview of Nikita's dad that I will put uh, in a link underneath the YouTube video when it appears. And so uh, Nikita, welcome. Uh, nice okay. to have you with us this afternoon. Yeah, thank you. Greetings to everyone who is watching. Uh, I'm honored to be here today with you. So tell us where you are right now. Right now, I'm in uh, uh, my home city is Dnipro. It's in central Ukraine. Tell us how far you are from the front. It's even less than uh, 100 miles. Well, it's about like 50 miles from front lines for, to occupied territories where the fighting is uh, going on right now. Okay. So I want to introduce you to our congregation and also to other pastors that I'm going to send this YouTube video to. <clears throat> but I'm, So I'd like to go through a number of things just so we have a general idea um, and, and uh, developing a familiarity with, your, uh, with you, with your life, with your ministry. So first of all, if you would please uh, tell us about your family and your upbringing in Ukraine. Um, some of you may know my father, uh, Eugene Kozachinko. My name is Nikita, as you already know. I have uh, one, three siblings. It's one brother, he's the youngest, and two sisters, Dasha, Sophia, and Evan. So it's six of us. Uh, I was born in a Christian family. Uh, my parents got saved uh, before uh, even my sister was born. Uh, my father, Eugene, he uh, founded uh, Baptist Church named Eastern Gate in 2003 or two, I believe, and then uh, passed the pastorship to another pastor and founded another church, uh, Menorah Baptist, in 2017. So I was raised in, in a church, being there for home, all my life, and as my dad was a pa pastor who founded, I was like right-hand man. Seen all this, uh, he's a missionary of 25 years to the Jews and Gentiles of Ukraine with uh, Jewish anti-ministry, JEM. Uh, and now he's a pastor of Menorah Baptist Church, uh, where I am currently a member. Yeah, so I, I, I love the names of the churches, East Gate, referring to the East Gate in Jerusalem, and Menorah, uh, obviously, the candlesticks that the Jewish people use in their synagogues. I, I love the names. I love the names. Amen. Yeah, it's all Jewish names being uh, missionary to Jews. And yeah. Dnipro, matter of fact, it's uh, the country with the largest amount of Jews in Ukraine. Uh, here is uh, created a, the biggest synagogue in the, in the whole Europe. Yeah. So yeah. here we have... Uh, a lot of Jews, so it's a good place to be a missionary to Jews, of course. Yeah, it is. It is. So I want you to tell us about your personal spiritual experiences growing up. <clears throat> I mean, as a little boy growing up in a Christian home and hearing your father preach the gospel and interacting with um, preachers from the USA and interacting with other pastors in Ukraine, um, Tell us about how you uh, went from being a, a lost little boy to a young Christian man. Yeah, I was saved in 2015 when I was 14, but all my life before, I heard a lot, a lot of times the gospel. I've been to some conferences, furloughs, a lot of different stuff was uh, what missionary kids, uh, the missionary parents is going through. But probably uh, the word didn't touch me deeply. Uh, so, but when I was uh, 14, I got saved, and I'm a product of missions. Uh, uh, Dr. Henry Benek, who is uh, director of Jew Jewish End Time Ministries, after his preaching, I got saved. So, it was in Eastern Gate Baptist Church, and I was baptized uh, three years later uh, when. 
Menor Baptist Church was already found to be baptized there. So I always, as I already said, uh, I was uh, raising, being with missionary dad. Uh, I've been to a lot of different conferences, seen uh, from all this uh, from inside. And when I got saved, I was thinking what I can do, how I can serve God. Uh, I was almost 18 and I was thinking what I want to do in life. I didn't know that. I was in high school. I was uh, finishing it. Uh, and I was praying. I was telling my parents, give me some advice, what, what I should do, what would you uh, advise to me? And dad said, keep praying. You have uh, the whole summer uh, to decide. And I'm advising you to suggest to enter a Bible college. We have probably the best Bible college in our uh, country is in Kiev, theological seminary. And as uh, my dad suggested me this, I agreed with him. Did know exactly by that time what I want to do in life, uh, and I entered Bible college. It's in 2018, so it's probably what I'm studying right now. I'm finishing my Bible college uh, in this year. So, uh, what is about uh, spiritual experiences? Is something how I was uh, growing spiritually. Uh, I was uh, with my parents with many some conferences. He was taking me there. And my father it was like the biggest example for me. And I already know by that time that I know how to be a missionary because I <laughs> saw everything from inside. And I really wanted when I uh, and entered a Bible college, then I was started to realize that I want to dedicate my life to, to the full-time gospel ministry. Of course, having an example of dad doing this for all my life and more than 20 years, his life. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, most people, I probably, I don't know that it, that it seems like it's important to other people, but I think it's significant to me <clears throat> that, that um, your father is a guy that when he came to Christ, uh, he came to Christ from a, uh, a different position and place than most Christians. Uh, the Apostle Paul talked to the Corinthians about not many wise, not many noble. Most of us who've come to Christ uh, do not come from positions of prestige and privilege. Um, and, and yet that was that was what happened to your dad. He was what a 19 year old university student when when the Soviet Union collapsed. And um, his father was an extremely successful man. Um, and uh, I think your your father uh, responded to an advertisement uh, wanting a translator. And he began translating sermons for preachers that had come to Ukraine with the opening uh, of Eastern Europe. And, um, and I think he was preaching the gospel as, a, as an unsaved translator. <laughs> he told me one time, he began noticing that these old women and these old men were weeping. And he began wondering, why are these, why are these old people weeping? Jo uh, tears, uh, tears of joy. And uh, he decided I should probably pay more attention to the sermons that I'm translating. <laughs> And the net result was he ended up coming to Christ uh, in great measure due to the sermons that he was hearing and translating for Ukrainians. So um, the fact that your father um, is in the ministry um, at personal cost, um, it cost him something to be in the ministry. And that's something that has to be obvious to you and your siblings, um, because your father could have had a far easier life uh, than God has called him to. Um, and, and his and your mom's lives uh, have been exemplary lives of sacrifice and persistent and, and uh, dealing with opposition. <clears throat> and um, uh, my heart goes out to you guys because of the situation that you were in with the the invasion by the Russians and um, 
the challenges that are facing you as, as Christians uh, are far more what Christians down through history have had to deal with than what is the collective memory of believers in Christ in the United States would imagine. Um, and so um, uh, my guess is that though you've had Bible college and seminary training, most of your real training came at the side of your father. Would that be correct? Well, yeah, I would say for sure that the biggest example uh, and knowledge that I have is uh, definitely from my father. My love to, to the word, uh, to some sermons is from him. But uh, for spiritual growth, it's something what motivates me is my seminary. But it's more like self-education. Uh, yeah. But in, yeah. the, in the beginning and by, uh, still uh, by now is from Father. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. <clears throat> that's good. Praise God. Um, your father is an exceptional communicator. Um, he is um, one of the phrases that would probably be appropriately used to describe him. And I think I think his I think his formal education when he started preaching was um, English literature. Um, he would be referred to by people in the United States as a, as a wordsmith. Uh, he is gifted in his selection and use of words. So he's a very articulate fellow. And um, it seems like the fruit has not fallen far from the tree because you strike me as an articulate man as well. So praise God. Praise the Lord. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, he was studying for uh, English translator in uh -huh. university when uh, Americans came to, to town and uh, they offered a job and he was trying to practice his English, and skip the lectures, so it, it worked out. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about what, I know that uh, man proposes and God disposes. Uh, you certainly have had plans, goals and objectives that you felt uh, God would wanted you to embark on uh, and then Putin. Uh, so tell us, um, what are your plans uh, at present uh, in response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and then what you anticipate might be God's will for your life should, should the Russian question be settled once and for all in the near future? Uh, me and my father, we already... Uh be uh, started to be like official official chaplains in our army before the government being uh, doing it all officially we're having many uh, supplies coming to our country trying to distribute them we go into the hospitals some of you may see my father's uh, prayer letters and uh, reports about what we're doing so now now i can see my future being in a war because with all the circumstances, having all these obstacles, God is always shows me how he, uh, not to seek the comfort, but his will and how he can be glorified in even these circumstances. Because nobody expects to be in a war. But being here, sitting for maybe a few weeks, not knowing what to do, or all our plans were, were we didn't have anything. So we wanted to serve the country and of course the Lord. So we become and became an official chaplains. Now we're going to the hospitals, uh, front lines, uh, giving some supplies, singing, singing, pre preaching, uh, track distributions. So this is what we're doing as a chaplains. Uh, me as uh, studying in Bible college, I cannot be drafted uh, as regular soldier well, I can, but I also can be a chaplain. So that's what I can regard to uh, being in a war. And also my dad were a chaplains. And now it's spring, it's getting warmer. We can get, uh, we can go like much far uh, to the front lines, much closer. So it's uh, warmer by now. And the main chaplain returned from the States. So we can do our means to better. Uh, our uh, intelligence of our uh, country is telling us that it probably will be war going on till August, but they're occupying all our territories. So it's like Crimea, uh, Donetsk, Lugansk. 
but we heard this all of this many times. I can give, go much more in details what's going on at the front lines, uh, what about the losses of uh, Russian army. But uh, briefly, it looks like it will over uh, till this uh, year ends. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna, it's not gonna be over real soon, is it? Yeah, we're praying it uh, to to end as soon as possible, but it's, <laughs> it's not, not earlier than end of uh, summer. Yeah, yeah. So one uh, one analyst in the U.S. said that. Uh, in all recent wars, Russia has lost at minimum half a million soldiers. And so it is probable that Putin is insane enough and evil enough that he is willing to use as cannon fodder uh, many more Russian soldiers. Uh, I know that their morale is very, very bad. I know they don't wanna be there. They don't wanna fight. And I, and I, I recall some videos that many of them, when the fighting began, they didn't know they were in Ukraine. Uh, yeah, they, that's true. They were completely deceived by 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 their by their military leaders, and so it's a it's a very very bad situation. And um, and uh, all Christians need to uphold uh, Ukrainians and Ukraine for this situation. And it's it's heartache and it's tragic. And um, um, like I said. Man proposes and God disposes, and so you you have you you have to go with it. You have to do, uh, you have to address the situation that is in front of you. You have to, you have to play the hand that is dealt with you, to use an expression. And uh, at present, you are the co-pastor of the church of of Menorah Baptist Church, and you are serving in a chaplain kind of of uh, capacity uh, with the Ukrainian soldiers. Is that correct? Uh, we're in a uh, chaplain organization. It's most, uh, it's Baptist organization. Uh, and uh, regarding to co-pastoring, I'm co-pastoring right now. I was uh, co-pastoring, uh, well, actually it was like pastoring uh, church in 2018 mm -hmm. while my dad and my family was, uh, were on their uh, furlough. Yes. Pastoring for half a year. You may know because uh, dad were to your uh, yeah, your church. Uh, right now, uh, as I'll probably already said about Eastern Gate Baptist Church, they uh, they was left without a pastor because he evacuated uh, with his family in the beginning when the war began. So a year ago, they didn't have pastor for about a year, and I was made decision on just last Sunday for my father to become their uh, interim pastor. Uh, on uncertain period of time while they're looking for a pastor. Maybe Lord yeah. willing, he will be their new pastor. So half of, of the month, I'm co-pastor Menorah. So uh, I have some experience of pastor in church. Yes. Yes, that's good. That's good. I'm already preaching uh, about like five years uh, when I entered uh, Bible college. It's something more like not preaching, maybe teaching materials, Sunday school lessons. Yeah. So yeah. are you, do you envision at some point in the future um, when, when conditions permit, I mean, you cannot do what you cannot do, but when you can, do you envision yourself um, engaged in a church planting ministry? Uh, in 2020, I dedicated my life uh, to the full-time gospel ministry. Uh, I didn't want, I didn't know exactly where God wants me to be, where exactly the place, but I knew that I want to be in a full-time ministry and I'm sacrificing my life to it. And I was praying for three or four uh, months about God's will. And uh, one day I met two Armenians on a web i was witnessing to them and after witnessing to them for a couple of months god has started speaking to my heart to be about being a missionary to the armenian people uh, i was uh, i was still praying about this if this is exactly god's will to me for half a year uh, more uh, like for six months 
I've already been on a server trip to Armenia last year, and I plan to get there very soon, but uh, the war has started. But uh, I see my future in the ministry. I believe that it's some church planting. I have desired to plant a church. Uh, I see I can be a pastor. Uh, I understand how to do this. I've been uh, to ch two churches from their foundation. And I see how, how the job is done by my father. So God is speaking to my heart to, to be in a church planter. Maybe it will be one church or more, uh, Lord willing. Would you also be uh, somewhat involved in uh, Jewish missions and evangelism as well, like your father is? Because he has kind of a two-pronged approach to ministry. He's starting churches, Baptist churches, and he also has evangelistic outreaches to Jewish people. Would you be doing similar kind of ministry? I, for sure, I like Jews. Uh, <clears throat> all teach us so. And as I already said, in Dnipro, there is a lot of Jews. I don't know where God leads me right now exactly. As, uh, we used to be almost every Sunday, uh, Saturday in synagogue, uh, making some new contacts, trying to witness to Jews being there. So we cannot do it very openly because of rabbis, uh, but we're trying to have some contacts with Jews. Yeah. It's in much, much more harder to do it in, to, with, to anybody else. Uh, so that's why he's uh, part of his ministry is to Ukrainians, of course. Uh, I would love to, to serve wherever God leads me. Uh, if it's to Jews, I would love to do that. But for now, my heart is, uh, I have a pain for Armenian people. As I've been to Armenia, I saw it and I really love uh, Armenians. But of course, as I already said, the Bible teaches us to go to Jews first. Yes. Uh, I'm already accepted as a missionary to the Jews, uh, Jewish anti-ministers, JEM, uh, pending official legalities upon the finish of this war. Uh, but not like a uh, missionary to the Jews, like my father. Right, right. Well, if you ever, uh, if, if, if the opportunity is ever afforded us, uh, I am I am a, I'm a friend with uh, with an Armenian pastor uh, who makes regular trips to Armenia from La the Los Angeles area. Uh, and one of these days, uh, I, I'm going to connect the two of you together. Uh, there's an awful lot of Armenians that speak Russian and you speak Russian, right? So uh, yeah. being being Soviet Armenia, a whole bunch of Russian speakers there so that the the language problem is much less for you than it might be for somebody else. So, so let me ask you finally, unless there's something else you'd like to share before we open it up for anyone who might want to, to ask questions, uh, tell us what would you like from our church? What do you, what do you want from Calvary Road Baptist Church? First of all, for sure is pray for me and my ministry. And as you pray, Please be sensitive uh, to God's leading, whether it's uh, to partner with me uh, in the ministry or not. I'm planning to be when the borders will be open uh, on my deputation. Uh, well, actually, uh, I was my uh, ordination was planned just a day before uh, the war started. So war started just a day before my ordination was planned. And I'm planning to be I plan to be right now on a deputation. But when the, all the borders will be open, I'm planning to be in the States. But please pray for my ministry anyways. Uh, as I know you're doing for my family and the ministry of my father. And there, be sensitive what God leads you to do. So, are you, are, you, are, are, are you in a place where you can receive regular support from churches now? I can be registered uh, in uh, before for our government to be like a receiver. Uh, I already received some support from my father's account. So people who want to uh, support me, there's already a few pastors. They send uh, the support on my father's account uh, and he gave it shared to me. Okay. So that's how it can be done by now. <clears throat> okay, well, that's good. So before we wrap this up in a word of prayer, I'm wondering if anybody who is participating in this Zoom call 
uh, would like to unmute your mic and uh, light up your video and ask uh, Brother Kosachenko a question or two that he would be willing to address before we before we wrap this up. Anyone at all? Hi, I actually have uh, some questions. So one of my questions is, what do you project the hardest challenges will be after the war? All right, it's an interesting question. After the war. Um, probably it's uh, maybe uh, refugees, they will be coming back to the country. And a lot of uh, refugees, uh, they lost their homes. They were destroyed by Russia or they're now on uh, occupied territories. So it's, uh, we have many refugees in our city. We have the biggest amount of refugees here. So it's something, it's hard work with refugees. Uh, it's uh, hurting people and they're in pain. So it's really hard to work with refugees. It's something I'm trying to learn, still learning how to communicate with refugees. So it's something uh, really hard right now. But after the war, um, rebuilding country in some way, as we heard, uh, as they said, the whole, every citizen will be involved in rebuilding country. I don't know uh, what, what does it mean, but it's probably will be something hard, yes. Yeah. Well, Ukraine has something that, that many other countries do not have. And it was the explanation behind uh, how quickly Japan and Germany were able to rebuild after they were devastated in World War II is that they have intellectual capital. They have uh, Ukrainians uh, have never been stupid people and they have never been ignorant people. They are a well-educated, uh, ingenious, inventive like I was telling you before we started recording, um, I, I like to read a lot about Russian and Ukrainian history. And, and I was surprised to discover that a, a tremendous amount of the intellectual brilliance that existed in the Soviet Union prior to the fall of the Soviet Union was from Ukraine. And, um, and so uh, the the application of their of their um, business acumen and their educational resources, it, and it might be a prime a prime time for God to send revival. Uh, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if God sent revival to to Ukraine? Yes, Amen. I agree with that. Does anybody um, else have a question? Okay. And regarding to some uh, maybe hard time after the war, I don't know uh, exactly what God wants me uh, in the closest future. If I will be one day in our serving God in Armenia, plenty new churches there. If I happen right exactly at the war, when the war will be over, or maybe in uh, many years after that. So I'm praying right now and I'm open for God's will. Because I was making many plans uh, before the war, as I already said, I wanted right now. I plan to be in the, in the states, and probably uh, the verse of one of the verses of this years uh, of this year is Proverbs nineteen twenty one. Uh, I have it on my desktop. There are many devices in a man's heart, nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Yeah, so it's something God still uh, shows me and i'm still studying that we we may have a lot of different plans but what uh, what god's will is only that we will stand so Amen. i'm open Amen. to you now you might be challenged and you might become discouraged we our church supports a missionary that was in a in a war zone of a country and when the place where he lived uh, suffered a rocket and mortar attack and he had to move uh, one of his supporting churches stopped supporting him because they thought that he was unstable. <laughs> and, 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 and he wasn't voluntarily unstable. His, his, his dwelling was leveled by a rocket and mortar attack. And so he moved. And they thought, oh, he moves too often. He's not stable. 
Um, and some people would be, I think, off put by what they would perceive with you as uh, being indecisive. But I would remind them in the book of Acts that there were several times the Apostle Paul had no idea what he was going to do the next day. Uh, and, and God used him. Uh, the, 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 the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. <laughs> so uh, mm -hmm. even, if, even if you don't know what you're going to do tomorrow, God knows what you're going to do tomorrow as long as you're open to him. And so uh, that, that's exciting in prospect. So would you, would you do us a favor? Would you communicate uh, our well wishes to your family, uh, our love to them, and uh, and I, my prayer is is that our church will very seriously consider um, partnering with you uh, as as a missionary and as a church planter. And my hope and prayer is that other other pastors would be willing to do that. So. If, if a pastor had a desire to, uh, to reach out to you and perhaps introduce you to his congregation, um, would it be acceptable to you for me to send him your email address so that he can correspond to you and perhaps set up a Zoom call and, and maybe schedule you for a deputation once this war is over? Would that be okay? Yes, please. I would be honored if you would do that. And I'll also have a video, mission video. I have a link. So you might you may share it with some other pastors. It's for this purpose also. So yeah, thank you very much. Is that the three or four minute one that you sent me before? Yep. Oh, that's a that's a most excellent video. I I I I commend you for that. So let's wrap this up with a word of prayer, shall we, and commit this entire thing to the Lord and and Brother Nikita's ministry to the Lord. Father, we do thank you for your goodness. We recognize that it is possible to serve you in the most adverse of circumstances. Uh, there's always a way if there is but a will, um, and you will provide the means. And so I pray that you might give to Brother Nikita uh, wisdom, uh, that you might encourage his heart, that you might give him stamina, uh, help him to capitalize on his youth and vigor, uh, help him to uh, um, make use of the wisdom and the example of his father uh, as he seeks to live for you, love you, and serve you effectively. Please provide protection for him and much fruit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for your time, my brother. It's been good talking to you. I look forward to doing this sometime in the near future, okay? Thank you very much. And thank you very much, dear George, for having me today. Uh, it's a big encouragement. Uh, Seriously, Amen. your prayers and a big support for us. We do appreciate that a lot, knowing that many brothers and sisters in Christ all around the globe, they're standing with us and giving uh, us your support. So thank Amen. you very much. Thank you, my brother. Have a good day. Bye now. You too. May God richly bless you. Bye.